Hi everyone, Chris here from Isles Advantage, and here we are again today with Michelle, David, and Damien. Uh, in our last video, we talked about IELTS myths and myth misconceptions, and that video went so well, we got so many views, you can check it out um, on our YouTube channel here, I'll link it above as well. Um, and what we did in that video was we asked you guys, um, do you have any questions for our IELTS experts? Because it's, it's very rare for you to have access to um, an array of IELTS experts, IELTS examiners that can answer your questions. So in this video, we're going to take all those frequently asked questions and answer them for you. Okay, so first question, how can I improve my grammar? Anybody want to take that one? Yeah, I'll take that one. So obviously, if you're aiming for a band seven or higher, you need to focus on grammar. You need to make sure that you're not making too many mistakes with your grammar. And um, a lot of students think that by doing more grammar exercises, they can improve their grammar. So you get one of these, you know, grammar practice books. Um, there's nothing wrong with them, but simply going through fill in the blanks or matching exercises isn't actually going to really improve your use of grammar in writing. Um, if it did, <laughs> that'd be great. That'd be easy in a sense. And I'm not saying that it's more difficult, you know, to, to do something else to improve your grammar, but it is more effective. So basically what you need to do to improve your grammar is you need to figure out exactly which rule you're not following or not understanding. And that's why some, you know, these grammar books can be useful because like, let's say, for example, you're making mistakes with articles and a lot of students do. Um, it seems very complicated and you do lots of fill in the blanks and you get some wrong and you're not really sure why and there's all these exceptions, right? You may have had a teacher in the past who said, oh, well, this is an exception. And, you know, that's not necessarily the case. So let's take a look at, you know, for example, making generalizations. And what I see a lot is students use the with a plural noun to make a generalization. Now, if you've ever made this mistake and if you've had a teacher, like, you know, cross out that article, then you have not understood the rule that we do not use the with general nouns to, sorry, with plural nouns to generalize. And you need to go and study that rule. You need to understand why. And you know, the reason why is because we use the definite article and we definitely know exactly which ones we're talking about. And when we're generalizing, we're not talking about like one particular group. So I could say, um, the school uniforms are a terrible idea. And then all of you guys who are listening to me are going like, well, which school uniforms exactly? Because I've used the definite article, but I don't want to say, you know, these particular school uniforms. I just want to say generally all school uniforms are, are terrible. So I need to use the plural noun without the definite article. So if you realize that you don't know that rule or you're not applying that rule, then you keep it in the back of your mind or you have it written down in your notebook. And when you're checking your writing and you're checking your sentence, and you're trying to generalize, then you look very carefully at, at the grammar. Have you done it correctly or not? And that's how you improve, not by doing a million more fill in the blank exercises with articles. Good, good. Any, any input from yourself, Damien or David? Yeah, I think um, Michelle's absolutely right talking about um, prioritizing the mistakes. So let's imagine you get some feedback from a teacher and they say you have like 11 article mistakes, but you have four tense mistakes, you know. There's no point you trying to do everything at the same time because it, it becomes overwhelming to have so many different issues. So it's best that, as Michelle says, like focus on those article mistakes, get them down. And then maybe the next essay you make two article mistakes, but four tense mistakes. And then your next uh, objective would be, well, I need to focus on the, on the tense mistakes. So it's about prioritizing what your key mistakes are rather than looking at it as one big hole, like breaking it down. Absolutely. Win, win one battle and then go on to the next one. Yeah, if, if you broke your leg and you went, went into hospital, they wouldn't try and fix all of your other bones. They would just try and fix that one bone in your leg. Um, it's a shocking number of IELTS students have only one or two really key areas of weakness when it comes to, to IELTS. And it's, uh, it's really following what we would call the 80 20 rule there's a small number of things that cause a huge number of problems and so it's identififying those those little things and and focusing on them and um, david any any anything you would agree or disagree or imp any input um, i have to completely agree a lot of the time students tell me that when they get feedback from a teacher or from school you need to improve your grammar they're often very overwhelmed um, grammar is a very, very big subject, so students don't know where to start. 
So following the advice that Michelle and Damien have given there is the best thing you can do. Rather than trying to tackle grammar as a whole, let's focus on your weaknesses, possibly articles one week, prepositions the next week. So, so don't take everything or, or don't try to do everything at once. Focus on, on small things. Mm, yeah, I'd, I'd say that most grammar books, not many students make it to the end of, <laughs> of those grammar books. Because if you buy like a big, thick grammar book, you'll get through the first couple of chapters and then you'll be like, oh, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's really, you know, for which chapters within a grammar book or which modules within a grammar course do you need to focus on? And it becomes much, much more manageable. Um, and, and feedback is obviously um, important as well um, because that is going to, um, it's going to really help you speed up the process of understanding which mistakes you're making and why they're, you're doing it. Trying to figure it out yourself is, is, is good and it's useful because you need to put the work in, but um, get some help with your grammar mistakes because you might be making um, mistakes that you're completely unaware of. So thanks very much for watching. If you have any other questions that you need help with, um, there's two things you can do. Number one, you can go to our website, ieltsadvantage.com. Um, you can also check out the rest of this YouTube channel. Um, it's got hundreds of videos um, that'll help you with your IELTS preparation. Second thing you can do is send us an email. We answer 100% of the emails um, that come into us. Chris at IELTS Advantage is my email address. You can send me an email and either me or one of the team will answer any IELTS questions that you have. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you have any other questions as well, feel free to put them in the comments below. Um, we read all of the comments and we'll try our best to answer any of your IELTS questions. David, Damien, Michelle, thank you so much for your help. And I'm sure we'll be seeing you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.